Hi, welcome to Anton's Mindstorms Hacks. Today we are going to discuss synchronizing two motors. I have built here a little device with um, two NXT motors. They have uh, two, you can see them as windscreen wipers and what we want to do is make sure they work like real windscreen wipers and work synchronized. This is the basis of uh, what I use later to control the robot fish, the, um, the catfish. So I'm going to explain you how the programming works. Here I have a very simple program um, and it basically, I'll, I'll just run it, it basically just runs the motors in reverse directions and um, there is no synchronization. So as you can see, after very little time, the motors, because of different internal frictions, they start to go out of sync. Our goal today is going to be to synchronize the motors. The first thing we want to do is control where the motors are going. So let me try a new program. What we're going to do here is uh, make a control loop in which we uh, read the motor position. So let me start with motor B and um, we're going to read its position and we're going to compare the position to a target position like so and so this is going to be the target position I'm going to add a var variable called target we're going to read that position and okay then we're going to multiply it by a feedback factor and feed it back into the motor so let's use uh, let's use an uncontrolled motor why not In control systems there is always negative feedback, so we're going to give this some negative feedback. Okay, and now we also <coughs> have to change the target a little bit, make it a variable target just for jokes. Okay, so let's make an other loop where we say we read the color sensor and measure the ambient light intensity and feed that back into the target. Okay, let's try this program. So as you can see now, if I change the target by reducing the ambient light, the motor position moves. Okay, this is how a motor continuously runs toward a target. Now this movement uh, was a little small, so maybe it wasn't very visible. Let's exaggerate the movement a little bit and uh, make it uh, say twice as large or three times as large, like so and try the program again. Okay, this is going to be a larger movement, as you can see. Depending on the ambient light the color sensor read, it moves the target. Good. Now the next program. Of course, we want to move the uh, arms as wipers. So let's um, vary the target with uh, regarding to time. So what we're going to do is uh, say put the target to minus 100 degrees, um, wait a bit 
and then change the target to plus 100 degrees and wait some more. So let's see what this does. If we get, if we are getting windscreen wipers now. Okay, we are. The movement is rather large. So, um, why don't we reduce that a little bit and move it down to say 70 degrees and 70 degrees. Let's see. Oh, let's move the wiper back to the center. Let's see what this brings us. Okay, now we have wipers, but as you can see, the movement is not very smooth. Let's try a different thing. Um, as you know, there is a function in mathematics which is called a sine function. A sine function um, makes a very smooth curve going up and down. And um, a sine function takes uh, an argument that uh, runs up or uh, has uh, changes. And for this input argument, we're going to use a timer. So let's uh, make some advanced math here. Use the timer and um, make a sine wave out of the timer. Now in LEGO Mindstorms the sine wave uh, uses degrees as input. Um, so before the timer reaches 360 seconds that's going to be uh, a long time. So what I'm going to do is multiply it by 360. So we have a wave about every second and let's feed back that into the target, remove this and see what our program does. Oops, we made a mistake here. Um, and the mistake was that the sign, the result of a sign is a number between minus 1 and 1. So we have to multiply this by say 70. 70 was the amount of um, movement that we wanted it. So uh, let's try it again. Okay, now here we have a very smooth movement um, from minus 70 degrees up to 70 degrees. We are getting close to our wind wipers or screen wipers that we want. Now um, it's a matter of synchronizing the second motor. Let's try that. For the second motor I'm going to more or less do the same as the first motor. So let me make some more space here. Copy it, paste it. Okay. This looks rather nice. Now let's move this here and we're going to use motor C and motor C and let's see if we have some nice windscreen wipers now. Yes we do, but since I mounted the motors in a mirror fashion I have to mirror of course the movement of motor C. Let's try that. So what we want to do is invert the target here for motor C. So let's add a little math. Okay. So this is my target. I'm going to multiply it by minus one. There we go. Let's see if this works. And voila! We have synchronized wind wipers. Now, 
as you can imagine, this is the basis of the movement of the fish where every segment um, moves uh, synchronized to the next segment. Now let's see how the synchronization works if the fish comes under stress. So what happens if I hold one of the motor, the other one keeps going, but as soon as I release it, release the pressure, uh, they come back into sync again. So that's a very nice way to synchronize it. Now if I go back to my first program, um, you will see the desynchronization um, will get even worse. So if I hold it even a bit, it desynchronizes, it desynchronizes very fast.